Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So it's looking like we are finally seeing that correction that uh, we were expecting. Uh, well, for, for the broader crypto market, for XRP in particular, guys, let me just zoom in here on uh, on XRP. So we are coming back down into this uh, this yellow band that I uh, identified a few days ago. This is the XRP chart on the daily. Here, let me throw this on the hourly so you guys can see uh, a little bit more in terms of uh, in terms of what kind of movements we're seeing for XRP, we certainly are bouncing down off this level and, uh, you know, we're by and large staying within the band. I mean, XRP has moved up past that upper part. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that in there, but I did also uh, plot a, a horizontal line uh, demonstrating the top of the uh, of the resistance level from back in 2021. So if we go back here, uh, you guys can see this would have been the top and, uh, you know, these prices are not going to be perfect. This is why uh, I, I generally like to identify uh, a zone and not just keep it to a price. The other fact is, is that uh, XRP is pretty much just following the rest of the crypto space, guys. This is Bitcoin on the daily. And as you guys can see, Bitcoin is also retracing a little bit. So this is the kind of pain that we're going to feel right now. Bitcoin is down only about 7.4%. Uh, off that high, it did go down as low as 8.4%. But guys, this is nothing. This is really nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, I don't know if we're going to see a, a, a larger correction as of now, but this is certainly something that I'm going to be paying attention to over there at patreon.com slash rookie money channel. If you're interested in seeing what I'm trading this bull run, it is only $5 a month. That price will be going up. You can sign up now to stay at that $5 price point. Here's the thing, guys. The extreme greed uh, is now coming down a little bit. We were in the mid 80s the other day. Now we're sitting at 80 on the dot. Bitcoin dominance is at 58.04. Uh, volume, though, that's up by 20.3%. Market cap, though, that has gone down. So we're seeing a lot of trading uh, selling pressure in the space. Bitcoin down 6%, Ethereum's down 4%, Solana's down over 9%, XRP down 12.9%. So, um, you know, some of the cryptocurrencies that have been the big gainers, uh, those are the ones now that are uh, are taking a bit of a back seat. So it's okay, guys. It's all par for the course. Pumps 50% in not even three weeks and then drops 6%. And I see on my X feed who is selling. And, you know, if, if this is your first bull run, I get it. You know, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well... Is this it? Like, is this the end? Guys, it's not the end. We haven't even wrapped up 2024 yet. Stock Money Lizard's posting this. Uh, well, if this is a serious question, then here's a serious answer, okay? The higher we go, the more liquidity gets trapped, especially leverage positions, buying capital that needs to be released. Short-term traders are taking profits. VCs and institutional investors are reducing positions due to a relative overweight of Bitcoin and other crypto assets in their portfolio. Investors and longer-term swing traders swinging their positions, aiming to buy lower. So scared retail uh, buying at the top who sell when the price reapproaches $98,000. These are all great reasons. And, you know, the psychology of trading really just kind of demonstrates why this kind of thing, um, you know, tends to happen. It doesn't make logical sense when you step back and you think about it. But, uh, you know, this is generally how traders will react. So, you know, this is why we do see these huge swings to the upside and then retracements coming back to the downside. It does uh, also just give the uh, the market um, a chance to recalibrate a little. Uh, crypt so crypto and Bitcoin is not a wholesome community, he says here, where we all buy an asset in the bear market and hold it until we can dump it on the broad masses who are late to the game. That is essentially the name of the game, guys. Summary. It's just normal market dynamics. And again, guys, if you're interested in what I'm doing, patreon.com slash working money channel, where I'm outlining my entire plan. This pump will continue, but every sharp increase needs some correction. So I wanted to thank Stock Money Lizards for uh, for mentioning this because, you know, it, 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 <laughs> the, the, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of people that are in this space for the first time or maybe the second time they caught it halfway through the uh, the bull market last cycle and they still don't really understand a full bull cycle. This would now be my third one. So, uh, well, two and a half technically because I did come in in 2017 when we were already going up seeing new all-time highs. So I've got experience in this space and uh, so does Stock Money Lizards. Uh, so it is good to just get a, you know, a bit of perspective if you guys are not familiar now, Crypto Insight UK also posting this. I'm trying not to get over my skis with excitement. Let's look at the positive, okay? But we had the perfect candlestick close. 
candle body open and closed above on the weekly above a seven year resistance. This is specifically for XRP. Okay. So here's the XRP chart on the one week. And uh, as you guys can see, we did actually close above that resistance level. I mean, now it's not looking so great, but um, guys, everything is going to ebb and flow as it does. Uh, if I throw this on the weekly chart, we still did. Uh, it doesn't invalidate this. And I mean, this week we, we still could trade up above the, uh, the open. So that's the thing, right? Crypto is all about the ebb and flow and uh, you know what the macro market is doing, what Bitcoin is going to be doing. Ultimately though, guys, our goal right now, getting up above and forming support above the dollar 43 mark. So in and around here, uh, that is really, you know, that is really the price, the zone that we need to, um, that we need to stay above and form support above in order to, uh, you know, in order to assume we are going to continue to the upside. And then that next stop is, uh, the former interyear high from 2021 of almost $2 per coin. So this is, I mean, for all intents and purposes from a TA standpoint is looking positive. Uh, if you want to look at the XRP chart on the weekly and, uh, you know, acknowledge that that weekly candlestick is in fact, very bullish. Uh, this has literally happened one time for XRP and then this followed. So guys, remember the last time that happened 2017, when XRP went up over 30,000%, was it 30,000 or 60,000? I don't even remember anymore, but, uh, it basically went from under a penny all the way to all time high over $3 and 80 cents on some exchanges. So let's just be prepared because guys, this bull run is going to be something else. Some other news has been hitting the space. Apparently the XRP ledger has malfunctioned. Crippen writer here on Twitter posting this XRP is safe. No history is lost. The XRPL is working again, but the big question is what happened? So what did happen? Did you guys catch this? Vitz Finn here posting this. The XRPL is currently partially down. Now he did post this uh, yesterday morning while I was uh, editing my first video of the day. He says, uh, we see a full history servers operated by us and others are down and Ripple's cluster is also reporting having no current ledger. So they are investigating and uh, luckily over the last 24 hours, uh, they have come to some kind of a conclusion. We did get some more information from Ido Farina here, just in. So this was from uh, a couple of hours later after Vitz Finn did post that original post. XRP ledger experiences a brief halt. And so these ledger numbers, uh, not, I'm not going to read them out, but you guys can, can see them here on the, on the screen. Uh, uh, we're lost. Okay. The XRPL was launched on June the 2nd, 2012, uh, and is now 12 years, five months and 23 days old as of November 25th, 2024. This marks only the second halt in over 12 years of operation during which no new fully validated transactions were produced. The halted ledgers were these numbers. Again, he reiterates those, uh, those numbers, uh, about two hours of halting, uh, out of about, uh, or sorry, out of 110,000 is extremely efficient for comparison. Bitcoin experiences a halt about every 34 days while Solana faces halts almost weekly. Uh, despite this brief interruption, the XRP ledger has operated flawlessly for 99.9982% of its lifetime. The optimal uptime consolidates the XRPL as the most reliable and robust blockchain in existence. So I'm um, giving us some facts here. Uh, he is giving us a, an update as well. The nodes are sinking back now and it appears that all the ledgers will be fully recovered. So that is good news. No ledgers have been lost uh, as reiterated here by Leonidas as well. Folks, please stop saying that the halting today was due to big money testing the XRPL or institutions preparing their move. I'm guessing there's a lot of speculation in the XRP community as to why we were seeing these ledger, uh, the, the ledger being halted. The issue is being investigated. And once there is consensus on it, we can settle on the reasons. So very simple, he says. So guys, it has been fixed. Um, they're still though looking into what happened. So Crippen, uh, Crippen writer here, uh, has come up with some more information. So uh, as yesterday was going on, more and more people were posting regarding this problem. I know some people are concerned about the XRPL and why it halted. And while this is bad, many community developers and Ripple X dev engineers are actually, are actively working to find out the reason and investigate why it happened. So it is safe to say that we will soon, uh, we will soon, uh, see and read a report from Ripple X and or XRPL Labs after the cause has been identified, fixed and documented. In the meantime, a little unrelated to the XRPL. But guys, there has been another ETF from Wisdom Tree about XRP that will make you smile again. So that is, uh, you know, we, we talked about that the other day, but, uh, you know, just kind of going back to this, 
uh, because I think this has gotten m- maybe some in the XRP community a little concerned, considering, you know, we've been sold on this idea that the XRPL is uh, well, one of the most robust uh, crypt- um, blockchains in the ecosystem. Jimbo here posting this. Is it necessary to use that word? I don't think it's an accurate description. It's not like the ledger went offline. It's still important to understand what has happened. Krypton writer here says, at what point did I say the XRPL went offline? So um, it didn't go offline, guys. The XRPL came to a halt because it stopped making forward progress. No transactions were included in some ledgers because there was no way for the DUNL validators to find consensus. So it was just a communications error, it sounds. Um, But here are some links. It's perfectly described here in the XRPL docs. It's a design choice. So for those of you guys who do not know, um, a standard quorum requires 80% of trusted validators. If more than 20% of trusted validators go offline or, uh, or become unable to communicate with the rest of the network, servers stop validating new ledgers because they cannot reach a quorum. This is a design choice to ensure that no transaction outcomes can be changed after they are finally declared or declared final. Uh, During such a situation, the remaining servers would still be online and could provide past and tentative transaction data, but could not confirm the final immutable outcome of new transactions. However, this means that the network could stop making progress forward uh, if a few widely trusted validators went offline. And so that is uh, exactly what happened here. Uh, We can debate the reasons why it happened or whether halting is synonymous with offline, but the point still stands. XRPL halted just as it was supposed to. It's fascinating to me that it has worked as intended and nothing worse has happened. Nevertheless, a halt is, of course, bad. So very interesting, uh, to say the least. Sambar here saying very sus for me to grasp the concept of a decentralized system where nodes from uh, different corners of the world seem to have simultaneously uh, failed. Obvious question, what uh, do they all have in common to cause an outage at the same time, so 80% consensus couldn't be achieved. And uh, Crippen writer here saying, that's the question on my mind too. Ripple X and the community devs are looking into this. So guys, we just all have to stay tuned. And that was as of, when did he post that? Uh, that was uh, 6 p.m. last night. Okay. Uh, so apparently guys, there has been a fix. A fix for today's XRP ledger halt has been released and that was as of uh, about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time yesterday. Ledger halt was released in Ripple 2.3. Please update your nodes. This is an important one. So within 24 hours, these guys uh, have figured it out. It's a community effort. So I'm asking you to please tell every business project using the XRPL to also update. So guys, we do have an update now aside from this. Uh, we also have lined up a feature amendment uh, with interesting new ones. And so uh vet here also just posting that the uh, the new amendments with all those feature uh, updates hopefully now everything is going to be back on track uh, I haven't heard of uh, anything else that uh, that is uh, holding up the ledger so wanted to thank vet Crippen writer uh, Ido Farina uh, originally for uh, sending us that update Vitz Vin of course uh, and uh, everybody else who was involved in this post uh, yeah including crypto insight UK and stock money lizards. So guys, XRPL getting updated. That's a positive thing. You know, considering Brad Garlinghouse was interviewed on 60 Minutes. Yeah, this is breaking news as well. Brad uh, put out a tweet uh, commenting on this. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse was interviewed by 60 Minutes. And guys, that is set to air this Sunday, December the 1st, 2024. The interview was focused on regulatory clarity, crypto in general, and how the industry has come together to advocate for pro-innovation candidates. Ripple is getting its moment under the spotlight, which which could be the pivotal moment for mainstream adoption and understanding of the XRP ledger. So that is uh, now confirmed, guys. Brad Garlinghouse going to be making an appearance in mainstream media, 60 minutes. So this is not just a news clip. This is a big deal. Brad Garlinghouse did post uh, commenting on this last week. 60 Minutes interviewed me about crypto, the push for regulatory clarity and how the industry banded together to advocate for pro-innovation candidates on both sides of the aisle through Fair Shake, uh, the full episode to be airing soon. So boom goes the dynamite, guys. This is mainstream Crypto is going to go mainstream. We are definitely, I think, especially after that interview, we're definitely going to be forming support uh, on top of former resistance, which will, in fact, uh, help support the case for XRP to go even higher during this next leg up. Uh, Not only that, guy, Sean McBride was also commenting another indication that Ripple is gearing up for something big 
uh, behind the scenes is that three senior level executives have recently left the company. Now, I know that might sound counterintuitive, but listen up. Brooks Entwistle, SVP of International, Emi uh, Yoshikawa, the VP of Strategic Initiatives, and one other who has made uh, who has not made their exit public yet. This could mean anything, of course. However, I've seen this play out before. And if you guys uh, don't know, Sean McBride used to work for Ripple, uh, also used to work for Google and Amazon. So why do they leave, asks Freeman down here, because they've accomplished what they needed to do. Interesting. I did not know about Brooks Entwistle, and neither did I, actually. Uh, Sean McBride saying Brooks is an amazing leader. Uh, he was the uh, he was with Ripple for three and a half years. I haven't spoken to him, but he might be taking some time off right now. So it could be that, uh, you know, they have accomplished something really big. And now, uh, you know, they just don't need that manpower anymore, at least not at this moment. Maybe they're going to hire somebody else in. Who knows, guys? But, uh, you know, Sean McBride, he would know he has worked for Ripple in the past. He's seen this play out before. The price of XRP, again, this is the weekly, is struggling to get uh, up and start forming support on this resistance base. Guys, this is only the weekly. We're still just in November. December is just around the corner. And 2025 looking more promising than ever. That's just my opinion. And if you want to see what I'm doing this bull run, what my plans are, guys, I'm rolling out several updates over the next few weeks at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. If you get in now, you will be paying that price. You will be grandfathered in at the $5 price point because I will be raising the prices soon. So patreon.com slash working money channel. Here we are, guys. The bull run is upon us. That's just my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.